Hi, welcome to another video from Dr. Locke. We're going to have a look at the HPC Shark. Now this is a purely uh, single and double sided code machine. There is adapters for Tibi and other other things, but mainly it's used for single and double sided car keys. Just looking around at the size of that thing, um, to be honest it is quite large. I'll just grab a rule with it. Okay, so my measurements on this one, from back to front, I've got uh, 430, and from the base to the top, 600. Uh, if we go across the width, including the stop button being pushed out, I would be estimating about 450. Now these are millimetres. It is a big machine but a few of the things that I just love about this machine I had this one in my own vehicle for about two years and every time um, I applied power to it, it just turned on so there was no on switch, there was no waiting, there was no nothing I'm going to flick the power off now, I'm going to show you what I mean power's off, goes down, power's on, beep beep and you're ready to start at cutting a key what was that, five seconds, three seconds, I don't know, it's quick Anyway, underneath here is a, this is the shield, uh, stop the brass filing from filing around. This is the business end of town. You can see down the back there's a bit of a, I don't know, black hole down the back. That's where the filings go. And they come out down the bottom here. I custom built a tray to go in there and I um, just pulled it out when needed. That collected the filings quite nicely. So I could just sweep my filings into this black hole and not worry about it. Now I'm going to go through and give you a bit of a rundown on this machine. comes with a little LED light um, to allow you to gauge up your keys. So it's there, it never really helped me. Um, comes with a four-way vise. You simply undo it, rotate it around. Okay, nothing really special there. Um, it does clamp all the keys just like any other key machine. Um, you know, there was nothing really tricky about it. Put it in, you clamp it. Uh, down the back here, you can probably see two sets of, um, of guides. One and two. Now, this machine will not work if you've got this uh, guide up. There's a little marker switch in there. You might be able to hear it. I don't know if you heard that. There you go. I'm pretty sure you could hear that. So, if it's in the way, like there the carriage is not going to move. Um, so you can put your key in, you gauge it up there, that's all quite easy. Now HPC is quite well known for having to replace the cutters de depending on the key that you're doing. On saying that too, you're not really replacing them all that often. Um, you're replacing them when you're going between an automotive key and a single house pin tumbler key. And to do that you simply just need to push this button in here which will lock, and then rotate it a little bit until it drops in. And once it's dropped in, use your uh, shifter I'm using a three-quarter one here, and then you simply go in there and just give it a twist. I'll do that now, just where you, if I can put you there. So I'm pushing in this button, I give it a small twist, it's a reverse, reverse thread. Now I can use my quick easy nut, and here it is here, the quick easy nut. So it basically gives you a little bit of um, you know, room to get your hand on. Pull the cutter out, that's the CW14MC used for pin tumbler locks. Put your new cutter back on. Spin it around. Um, push this, you need to keep this button pushed in and tighten it. One more thing, it does do uh, Medico as well, so it does the angles here as you can see. It's got the rotating of the vise there. Um, so looking at it from that side of, side of the fence, that's all you really need to do. Put your key in, use the key gauges, guide it up. Uh, there is also other key gauges, um, like there's one for the back and things. Generally, a lot of locksmiths, they only use two. And um, there is also adapters as well, but most of the time you'll only be using what you see in front of you. Now, this machine was um, perfect. I, I mean, comparing it to some of the other newer machines, um, when you look at this machine and you say how big and all the rest, and you'd be saying, oh, what's the difference between this and a Unicode? Um, okay, so let's just look at some of the differences on this one. The Unicode um, is exactly the same sort of thing. It cuts keys to code. Um, some people say this machine can't decode, and that's not correct as well. 
Um, the Unicode has a decoder in it, uh, and this one has a decoder on the back. So what you would do to decode, you would simply, I should have used a tripod on this video, sorry about that, you would just back your, uh, back your uh, thing out, slide in the decoder, it's been so long since I've done this, <laughs> slide in your decoder, is that right or is that upside down? Nope, oh, that's upside down. Slide in your decoder like so. Okay, that will lock in. And then tighten it up. And then you can actually decode a key. Um, to be honest with you, it's been so long and I've never really done it. Not sure if you have to remove the wheel or not. Uh, but that's where the decoder goes and that's how you insert it. I never really use it, I just read the key and do it by eye. But um, yeah, this uh, machine does have a decoding function as well. It's not an optical laser like the um, Silca Unicode, but it does have one all the same. Next thing is, what about blowing a code from one to the other? Can you, um, like if you're using Instacode, can you send a code to this machine if it doesn't have the DSD or um, you know the space and depth and all the settings for that particular key? So it's a brand new key. Can you do it? And the answer is uh, yes, you can. One thing that is different about this machine that the Uni Unicode doesn't have is you can go to DSD and you can actually create your own um, space and depth or you can look it up by the manufacturer and all the rest. Um, if I go back here, um, a few of these, um, like this one here, that's my own custom one that I've, I've designed and it was very simple to basically go in there and make your own. So here we have here, under tools, edit, um, DSD, presets, so they give you so many um, cards that come with this machine. To be honest with you, there's a lot. So I had no troubles with there not being one in there. Um, whenever I needed something that wasn't in there because it was new, I just sent it from Instacode straight to this machine. Within two seconds, I was ready to start cutting. Um, so yeah, also custom DSD. How is this different to um, the Unicode? Well, the Unicode doesn't have custom DSD as far as I know, but both machines will accept a code uh, sent from Instacode. As where the new uh, Silca Futura won't. It won't accept a new a new DSD code sent from um, Instacode, which is crazy. And to create a custom DSD, you've actually got to purchase another expensive application uh, with the software, which I think is crazy as well. That's for the Silca Futura. You go to an older machine like this, there's no waiting time, you turn it on, you're ready to cut, do a custom DSD. Now let's say for example you've just cut a, a key and it's not quite right, okay? It's an imported version or a, a knockoff of a, a good lock and it's not quite right. With this machine here you can actually just do small adjustments um, to the actual card that you're doing and I'll show you how to do that later. That's something the Silca um, you know code didn't actually have. That's why one of the reasons I love this machine so much is because if I was cutting a key and it turned up that the key was slightly low, I could quickly go in there, notched up a couple of thou, and we're ready to go. But anyway, let's not get sidetracked. Let's finish off on the menu here. Um, edit DSD presets. Okay, so if you find something's not quite correct, you can just go in there and edit it. Um, right now we're on um, C4 Lockwood Australia. Enter. Go back, tools, edit, and edit next preset, and you can pretty much go through and um, start start doing them. Anyway, let's go back. Custom D uh, DSD. You can make your own make your own cards. I've made a few along the way. Hafali, um, you know, and I've put ones in like uh, CL locks. So let's just go to that one if I can. I've just put in ones that were helpful for, for me at the time. Edit, see look, enter. Okay, so here you have it. Gauge, jaw, cutter, measurements, width of cut, uh, contour, which is the shape of the key. That's something else which uh, the Unicode doesn't allow me to do. Um, was give, uh, give me the options of having certain keys with contour or barbed. And if you don't know what that is, that's basically the amount of spikes on the key. If you want um, one to have a lot more spikes, you would put barbed. If you want it to be like laser cut, you would do contour. So on some automotives, it's actually 
a lot nice key when you do that. You can also set the speed for all of that as well too. So if you're doing um, little tiny keys and they're steel, you want to go a bit faster or slower, you can set it on that particular card. As with the Unicode, you can't. Um, please confirm, go back. Uh, let's just cancel. We don't want to change anything. Back. Go back. Back. All right, so custom DSD is absolutely awesome. Um, I don't know why more machines don't have it. In actual fact, what I might do uh, before I proceed is just turn off this light, just one moment. Okay, is that better? Slightly. Okay, turn it back on then. All right, now I can see better of what, I, what I'm actually doing. All right, decode, we went over the decode function. Um, and yeah it's basically calibrate it, decode a key most likely you need to tell it what type of key it is and things like that security um, password so you can lock the machine down that's fairly straightforward service position when you push this the carriage moves into the service position giving you more room to actually get to it take note that this guide here doesn't stop me from cutting at all it's just a piece of plastic help helps keep the brass in which is cool. Machine adjustments. Now, um, originally with this machine, I did have one little tiny problem, uh, but that's in the next menu. All right, so here we've got uh, tip space, shoulder space, uh, data type inch, um, default, cancel, tip bow, depth. So if something's not quite right with your space and depth, and you're finding this across different keys, you can go in here and change it. It might be a bad um, cutter that you've got, um, it might be a bad calibration with the jaw or something else is different. You can actually just go in here and recalibrate down to where everything's good. Um, that one's pretty straightforward. Um, machine adjustments. Okay, back, back. Um, DSD spef specification adjustments. So in here you can go through, you can adjust to. So there's a lot of, uh, lot of things you can actually do. DSD not found. Okay, edit, back. What is it doing to me? Why can't I go back? You know what? I never use this function and today it seems to have paused up on me. Alright, hard reset. Off. Back on. I don't know why it paused up. It's never ever done that in its life, but today it does when I do a video. Special functions. Okay, um, screen calibration, update from MMC, verify code, main screen. Okay, so with this one machine, um, I one day turned it on and I found the screen was out of calibration. I tried to recalibrate it, couldn't quite do it, and um, ended up replacing the screen. It wasn't really the screen's fault, it was just that it went out of calibration. And I'll show you how to do that if you ever have that, because it cost me a, a thousand bucks for a new screen, and I'll show you how to do it. So you go to screen calibrate, and you push on the X here, you push on the X here, and you push OK. And that's it. Now if you ever find your screens way off, Okay, let's take for example um, your screens like over here or something. What you do is you basically um, push these two points where you can. So if our screen was over here, we would go bing bing and then recalibrate it until we work our screen back over. Uh, I'll show you for an example. I'm going to push here and I'm going to push here. Okay, now our screen will be out of calibration for that particular um, amount back. So if I try to push um, machine machine adjustments back machine adjustments okay anyway take my word for it um, screen calibration if your screen is out of whack um, if you can't get to the dots push where you can and work the screen back doing multiple calibrations to get the screen back into alignment that is how I did it and I wasted a lot of money getting a new screen okay so none of the rest of the stuff you're going to kind of need um, you can reset your presets here as well. Let's go back to tools. Um, contrast sets the screen going darker, going lighter. No big deal. Beep on and off. And that's what we got in the tool section. Uh, presets, uh, sorry, reset, uh, codes, and DSD. So it does even have um, a code database built in. The Unicode does not. So there's yet another 
uh, function that's different. Um, let's just look up, um, see if we can look up a Tibby code. Okay, T11111, enter. Please wait. Okay, so that's what's coming up under T1111. Opal, miscellaneous, Honda. So there's a, a good indication, okay? But let's go back, oh, search by uh, blank only. Okay, let's go back and let's just do a uh, uh, search for lock codes, okay? Just a standard code, 92110, uh, one, which is a standard LNF, enter. There we are right there, it's picked it up, enter. So it's given me my bidding, um, my jaw, jaw A. I'll show you where the uh, numbers are, jaw A. So we'll back that off as if we we're going to cut it. Jaw A is in. Cutter, um, 10, 11. Okay, we've got the wrong cutter in. Using the shoulder, using the shoulder. Got the option in new code, key blank, deburr and adjust. Now deburr, you can push this button. Deburring. It's not doing anything. Now that's the deburr on the side. This wheel gets fitted in there and then there's a bit of uh, plastic that goes over the top which gives you a little hole that you stick the key in and out. I wasn't a fan and it was held on by Velcro. Since then it's fallen off. Not the best of designs but it was okay. Even the screen here I've still left the plastic on there just to keep um, things away. Um, okay so now let's say we've got this key in there and um, something's not quite right or the lock is not right we can go to adjustments. We can change the spacing, the depth, uh, the contour barb, smooth finish, smooth with barb at the end and that's basically just the shape of the key. Uh, you can make it smooth or not. I can change the speed. Now if I change all these things and I want them to be there permanently I push permanent. If I just want to do it for one key I push temporary. Um, then we go back. Okay so let's just let it do a cycle. It's going to its right position. That's it doing a cycle and you're probably wondering why the machine didn't actually make any noise that's because of this thing right here we took out it actually needs to be sitting in its holder for the motor to run so when we push the deburring tool and it didn't deburr it was because of that let's go through and push that deburr there's the deburring happening the center is running that's how you do it. All right, I wonder if we actually have a key we can cut. Oh, no, no need to cut a key. I'll run you through the cycle one more time. Push the cut key. That's it. So it's extremely quick. A lot of the time I had a lot of keys to duplicate. I'd actually um, find out what the code is, jam a uh, key in this machine and start cutting it to code even when I could duplicate it. Why? Because it was quick. And that's, um, you know, I had this machine to my left of me so I could simply flick it up, load a key in, tighten it in, whack it down, punch in my new code, blah blah blah, blah enter, um, push start and it'll start cutting me this perfect key um, and, you know, I could do that off to a side as I was pinning up locks. So when I'd be pinning up maybe one lock, I could have three keys cut in the meantime just by swinging around and working on um, this machine. So that's one of the reasons I love it so much. Um, this particular one we probably will be selling. Um, it did have, um, uh, it was rubbing on something and it did wear uh, the, make a bit smooth on the top there. Look, that's not, not too bad. Um, there was some rub marks down here too. On and off switch is located here emergency is located here um, for what it is it's a great machine um, maybe the later stage I might buy the newer model one but it never never let me down apart from the screen calibration where I had to change the screen and uh, for what it's worth for what it is 
Um, it's an excellent machine and I, to have it in the vehicle um, in a van was just excellent because as soon as you I had a, an inverter which um, would supply power to it straight away with it on the in, on position and this is what I basically would happen I'd flick the switch off it would turn off I turn the inverter on bang powers up just like that and that I found really good as far as Instacode absolutely brilliant spoke to it it was uh, works better than the new Silco Futura um, as far as changing or adding a card all built in as far as the database it's all there um, so there's so many things about this machine that just made it um, easy and if I was to compare this machine against the Silco um, uni uh, the old Unicode um, I believe this machine has more variables um, at the end of the day uh, which kind of makes it my favorite um, if you've got a an LW5 key and um, so it's Toyota if you've got like a C4 LW5 key and it's just not right you just hit adjustment and from there you can I've even adjusted it here and it's remembered it so I've got my um, spacing which is 0 0.02 out and my depth which is minus 0 0.006 so you can see how precise that is and um, yeah anything you kind of want to do to get a perfect key um, you know it, it's a really good um, really good platform you know um, HPC makes some awesome machines and um, I mean that it's not the prettiest it's large look at that it's huge it's huge it's huge but for what it does um, and for how quick it does it and how efficiently it does um, I think it's an excellent, excellent machine. So that's my quick um, look at the HPC Blue Shark. And um, we might be selling this one off. Um, I just don't know. I, I have too many code machines at the moment. Um, but yeah, if you are thinking about buying one of these, the Code Max is um, another machine, but this is the next step up. And um, having the screen, the LCD screen, um, really does make a difference. The touch screen works just fine. And um, I do have another screen if anyone needs one, let me know. Um, I'm happy to sell my old screen. If you've broken your screen, rather than spend $1,000, um, I can sell you the other one. Um, but yeah, I replaced the screen because of um, I, didn't, I didn't know how to recalibrate it. When I started touching and things were too far out of calibration, I thought the... I spoke to the rep and the rep said just replace the screen and all you got to do is just uh, do as much as you can and then do as much as you can again until you get it where you need it to be. So that might save somebody some um, hassle there. Just looking back down here, just a quick recap. Um, you know, it is a really easy machine. Hardest thing is just to change the cutter every now and again and um, the jaws. Clamping on these jaws a few little cuts in there, I don't know why. Well, obviously there when I got it. Um, clamping the keys, double-sided, single-sided, all of that sort of stuff. I had no troubles with these um, with these jaws. I'll rotate them around. So we're looking at the V side. If you can see, the V is on the top. Uh, upside down V, V is on the bottom. B side, just a straight up clamp. A side, just a straight up clamp. So the only thing that I had to do sometimes with some very small double sided keys was use the wire tool um, and that was about it. So that's the quick look at the HPC Shark and if you've got any comments or you like this machine or I've left something out or I said something wrong put it in the description below. I'm always happy to read and see them and uh, find out more about the machine or, or be corrected where I've made a mistake. Thanks for watching.